ASEAN Breakfast Call. First and foremost news from Southeast Asia. Good morning. This is Grace, and then welcome to Jian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. So before we start with the uh, um, news commentary, what's happening in Malaysia? Uh, recently, um, uh, the, it was the first time for Malaysian. The we who's the Miss Talent at the Miss World at the final, she made it to the Miss uh, uh, Miss World finals. So Miss Malaysia 2014, uh, Dewi Liana Sarista, has become the first Malaysian to win the Miss um, Talent subsidiary title at the Miss World 2014 finals in London. And congratulations! And uh, this is definitely a, a very positive news to Malaysia, which Malaysia uh, has a rare record in making a beauty pageant. Uh, in the world, and then uh, she finally um, uh, marked as a Malaysian uh, beauty around the world. And she's 25 years old and Sarawakian, wowed judges and audience and the EXA London ICC Auditorium. And also as well as millions watching at home with her powerhouse vocals during her sing of the, the glitzy pageant with uh, Miss Scotland Ellie uh, McKing, who also chose to showcase her talent with traditional Gaelic vocals. So this um, multi-talented um, a lady, she made it to the world pageant um, out of uh, 120 other contestants from around the world. And according to her, I chose to sing um, the song because she knows that it's the best compliment that she can show of her talent. And at the same time, it is also a uh, show the love that I have for classical music and it showcase everything that uh, she has learned throughout her vocal class. So. Apparently, Devi um, emerged in the, um, the triumphant in this challenge, and she admitted that she initially thought that the making um, making would win the Miss Talent. So there was a bit of a tension, but then she finally made it to the final, and the congratulations again. <clears throat> so coming to uh, next to news that we have to travel all the way to Pakistan. What's happening there is um, this Pakistan, uh, uh, the Peshawar school attacked, and that leaves around 135 people dead in that uh, country. So, <clears throat> militants from the Pakistani Taliban have attacked an army run school in Peshawar, and that's a region, and they're killing around 100 over people, and 132 of them are children, and according to the military. So the scores of the survivors are being treated in the hospitals as a frantic parents search for news for their children. And describing the attacks from his uh, hospitals, um, according to one of the um, one of the people, uh, Sharuk Khan, 17 year old, said that the gunman had entered his classroom and opened fired at random. And as he was hiding under the desk, he saw his friends being shot and one in the head and one in the chest. So there were some violent things going on and a lot of people were damaged and also passed away due to this attack. So what's why is this uh, attack happening and exactly and in uh, Pakistan? This brutal attack may well may well be a watershed for the country long accused uh, by the world of treating terrorists as a strategy is set. Um, the Pakistani Pakistan's uh, policy makers struggling to come to grips with the various shades of militants have often uh, cited a lack of consensus and also a lack of pockets of sympathy for religious militants as major stumble block. Well, uh, probably why when uh, the army chef uh, Jen Rahan Sharif launched what he called an indiscriminate operation earlier in the uh, in the year against the militant group in Pakistan, the lawless tribal belt, the political response was lukewarm at best. And um, after uh, the incidents that happened in um, Australia and Sydney, and this is just a day after that or there was another uh, attack that happened in Pakistan. Of course, we cannot relate these two incidents. However, um, this definitely attack has caused many deaths and many uh, damages to families and the people around.
And then moving on to the next one. Uh, artists didn't uh, follow artists sorry didn't follow the Sharia and also foreign ministers look into expo held in Egypt. Uh, well, there was an uh, expo was held in Egypt and the Malaysians um, <coughs> participated in that expo. <coughs> sorry, and according to foreign affairs ministers, that took sorry um, Anifa Aman said. Well, he was there to watching uh, for the result of the investigation before commenting on the uh, memorandum issued by the past youth. And according to past youth, they said uh, the performance did not meet um, to Sharia, the, which is Islamic tenet. And um, they submitted uh, a past youth delegation today. Uh, it was yesterday, sorry, submitted the memorandum of, of the protest regarding Malaysia Expo 2014. Uh, which actually um, the Expo, uh, Expo Festival City Mall uh, took place from December 10 to 13. And the past delegation was <coughs> led by past youth vice chairman Kairon Nizam Kar uh, Karudin and joined by Salango past youth Chafa Yustaz uh, Sharan Humez Abdul Halim. Uh, federal uh, territories pass you to Chaf Nuru Islam Muhammad Yusuf and then Kumbak Satya Assembl Assemblyman Abdullah Ridwan. So they met with the Foreign Ministry Africa Division representatives who received the memorandum on behalf of the Foreign Affairs Ministers uh, who was actually on holiday on the end of this year. So <clears throat> he, according to them, said that the incident of this involving the performance was deplorable and suggests that the Malaysian ambassador in Cairo would be more careful in the future when organizing such programs. He also said that the organizers of the program uh, also seemed to intentionally want to harm the Malaysian students in Cairo who are in the field of Islamic studies. So what's happening here is um, there was a performance was held in the expo in Cairo and according to the youth, uh, past youth, uh, they didn't meet the certain criteria because it, uh, Malaysia is definitely known for Islamic, um, uh, dominated Islamic countries and then uh, that didn't carry out much via the performance and then of course this group of people were not happy about it. But after all, what is really representing Malaysia? Is it the religion or is it the harmonious or is it the diversity of the country? Well, that question is always left and then uh, and unanswered, of course. <clears throat> Moving on to, um, which is to talk about the uh, oil price and also our Malaysian ringgit currency. Which, actually, which is actually dropping and then that worries quite a lot of people mainly because um, this Malaysia has emerged as a Southeast Asia's weakest spot because of the current slide in the global uh, crude oil prices and the rising US Treasury yield that weakened the ringgit against the US dollar um, which is actually uh, a worrisome because uh, uh, compared to other countries' currency, uh, noticeably and evidently, the Malaysian currency is dropping quite drastically uh, since um, a couple of years ago. And uh, the emerging Asia had proved relatively resilient to the deterioration in sentiment, partly because the investors had been much more uh, uh, um, be significant on the region compared to the emerging Europe and Latin America and also Asia's uh, main economics were all net oil importers and benefited from the failing oil prices. And also the management of uh, the managing director of London based in the niche consultancy firm Spiro Sovereign Strategy, he actually mentioned that the Malaysia stocks have dropped uh, about 12% in the past three months, describing it as one of the steepest declines among major EMs, while the Indonesian and the Thai equities counterparts have fallen just around 0.8% and 2.5% respectively for the same period. So compared to 0.8 2.5%, actually indeed 12% dropping is actually quite drastic. 
And that relates to the ringgit currency, which I mentioned shortly, that the ringgit has plunged nearly 11% against the US dollar since the end of August to five-year low, while, while Indonesian rupiah Thai baht the the philippines peso only followed 5.3 or 3 percent and also two percent respectively so again the comparably the percentages and also the gap between uh, malaysian ringgit and any other southeast asia countries the gaps are really huge and the malaysia's central bank bank nigara quoted the ringgit at 3.49 ringgit to the US dollar and 2.66 to the Singapore dollar today. And despite the yield to Malaysia's 10 year old uh, local currency, bonds have uh, risen modestly since oil prices began to, fa uh, f began to fall sharply in October. And also, uh, Malaysia's bonds remained unattractive. This is very important factor to remember why. Um, the um, uh, ringgit currency ha has been falling is also because of the unattractive because of its low yield and exciting data from Bank of America Merrill Lynch which tracks foreign holdings of EM domestic depth Malaysia's local bond market suffered outflows of 900 US dollar million in October but then if you uh, if I were to compare Malaysian uh, a currency, ringgit currency, and to other uh, countries, for example, Indonesian. The Indonesian and the India bond market enjoyed the US 1 billion and also 600 million of inflows, respectively. Well, due to mainly due to the higher yield and then the enthusiasm uh, generated by the election reform minded leaders in the both countries, definitely uh, Indonesia. Uh, is reforming to a new systems, a few new systems, systems in the, in in the country, and a lot of people are hoping for the better, uh, uh better uh, movement and better uh, move forward steps, and also India, <coughs> uh, despite of having a lot of uh, matters regarding corruptions and then uh, inefficiency. Um, they are also making uh, a step forward in terms of economical uh, uh movement. <coughs> However, when we come to our nation again, Malaysia is experiencing an all driven deterioration in its fiscal and also current account balances. So this actually concerns the people in our nation because that will definitely uh, affect the ringgit currency. And to continue, uh, nothing that about one third of Malaysia's revenue come from the oil and gas exports. And uh, the credibility of the government fiscal policy now was dependent on the coming goods and the service tax, which will be implemented in in the next year around uh, around April. So, um, well, despite um, the, the recent outflows from the country's uh, country's bond market, the foreign holdings still accounted for about forty five percent of the market, which was higher than the countries such as. Indonesia, which has 38, and also Thailand, 18, Brazil, 20, and Turkey, 26. So there is a slight small silver uh, aligning that the Malaysia's local institutional investors, such as government control per, uh, pension funds, which could be relied on to pick up the slack when the uh, uh, flighter, the, the foreign investors reduce their holdings during period of the financial stress. So hopefully, regarding these matters, well, we can uh, receive the more uh, positive news and also improvement in the ringgit currency as well as all uh, prices in the nation. So moving on to the uh, next uh, <coughs> news, which is also local affair, which is regarding the uh, the Johor Sultan's land deal uh, hurting the Iskander, which means that the controversial about the 4.5 billion uh, ringgit land dealt by this uh, Johor Sultan and also other mega property developments linked to him caused uh, that has led uh, having the ripples in the Iskander this year and also prominently analysis to, to do one of their potentially their effect on the project long-term growth. 
so which will definitely uh, uh, affect the, the, the deal that was uh, I mean Iskandar and then uh, nothing much has actually has been um, revealed regarding this news but uh, we'll be uh, following up and update you guys about this uh, news soon and again, again, uh, it, this is regarding our local affairs. So Trangana has the highest lovers of online porn. This is quite um, interesting uh, news to share to our listeners there. Well, according to the one news agency, the Star Online, they uh, uh, they conducted a survey, recent survey, by the video company Pornhub, which is one of the the quite famous uh, porn website has revealed that the internet users in the Kuala Terengganu spend some 12 uh, around 13 minutes on average either surfing for online porn or drooling over it so this is very interesting and also very intriguing um, fact that <coughs> not, many, not many people are aware of and although one could argue that the 12 minutes isn't a lot of time, but just compare that with the 8 or 7 minutes that a Cambodian spend doing the same. Well, it can come up with a lot of facts when it comes to uh, access to the, uh, when it comes to accessibility to the, the oldest porno website. And then despite the Malaysian having the restrictions on the website going um, some of people can find their own way to 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 uh, enjoy their desire enjoy their uh, pleasure uh, on the website and also with the uh, Kota Baru and Miri clocking in at around also 30 minutes each and the Kuantan at 12 or and 15 second minutes the average length of time spent on this porn made Malaysia one of the highest in ASEAN well it's it's though it's not the highest highest in the world that place went on uh, to the Philippines that uh, clocked around uh, 14 and 40 minutes and 20 seconds, earning them in the title of the being the highest or the longest Pornhub users on the world. So just to give you more statics uh, around uh, the Southeast Asia, Malaysia was followed by the Myanmar around 10 uh, minutes and 54 seconds, Indonesia 10 minutes and 11 minutes, Singapore 9 minutes and 50 seconds, Brunei 9 minutes and 45 seconds, Laos 8 minutes and 28 seconds, Vietnam 8 minutes and 24 seconds, Thailand 8 minutes and 15 seconds, and Cambodia, which was the lowest, 8 minutes and um, 7 seconds. Well, it is actually very uh, something, <laughs> well, um, eye opener to to know uh, how how many countries have ac ha have actually uh, ability to access to the uh, porn online uh, website as well as how many people are actually attending to websites around the world well more news will be coming up tomorrow so that's it for the, our news commentary from Durian ASEAN thank you for listening and don't forget to download our TuneIn app and find us Durian ASEAN and we also have our social um, channels such as Facebook YouTube and Twitter and don't forget we just created an Instagram as well so again find us in Durian ASEAN we'll be back for um, a blast from the grassroots thank you